Hey, hey, welcome to this Thirsty Thursday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming today like we do every day, Monday to Friday, noon to 2 Eastern, from the Newsmax headquarters high atop Midtown Manhattan. And we start the show every day by going downtown and checking in on the markets, seeing what's happening at the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, today downtown, the bulls are on the run and uh, running in the right direction. The Dow's up 120 points, uh, just about as we speak, 27.258, just about to break through uh, 27.54. And uh, it'll be an all-time, all-time high, and that's going to set off all kinds of computer programs and all that other stuff. Uh, I'm not telling you, should I move over a little? Yeah, that, that looks better. Thanks, Lamont. Uh, I'm not telling you to go out and buy the market, but I'm telling you that the policies are starting to stick. They're talking about lower rates. They're talking about more jobs. Uh, so things are good. And over 27, breaking an all-time high, it stays up there. 30 is on the horizon. So keep your eye on the market to the upside. Things are looking good to me. And uh, Bitcoin up a few hundred today after taking a beating over the last week, but uh, still well established at 10,000. 250, uh, well above that 10,000 mark that it's been building some support. And uh, always here to support me, my right hand man, Frank Morano, managing editor of Liquid Lunch. John, good day. It is good to see you. Always good to see you too. Absolutely. Uh, and very appropriate that you mention finance because, with all the news that's in the world today, that is precisely the subject that I'll be speaking frankly about. So after a nearly two to three week hiatus, this Sunday, as I alluded to for those of you that caught yesterday's program, I will be returning to Atlantic City. I'm staying at a nice hotel there, and um, but you know, one of the things that comes with having a gambling addiction is you get rooms for free. So I'm happy that this Sunday evening I have a room for free. How much is this room for free going to cost me? Thirty dollars. Now. You might ask, what does that mean, $30 for a free room? Why would you be paying for a free room? Do you mean in gambling losses? No, because for whatever amount you get in a hotel, whether it's $100, whether it's $200, or whether it's complimentary, you have to pay these resort fees. These resort fees are outrageous, they're dishonest, I think they're illegal. So all of the hotels in major tourist destinations, Atlantic City, Las Vegas, San Francisco, New York City, especially the Midtown area where we are right now, they tack on these resort fees. Now, what's a resort fee? Nobody knows what a resort fee is. So why do the hotels do it? Well, they do it so that they could tell you you're getting a free room or tell you you're paying $20 when you're actually paying 50. And they do it because in places like New York, they pay less taxes on the resort fees. Now, the hotels claim that these resort fees are for the great services like free Wi-Fi and free local calling. But you're not really paying for a service because you have no option to decline it. Now, try to stay at a hotel without resort fees. Good luck. In these districts that have resort fees, they all have them. I view this as nothing short of collusion. And after I make my trip Sunday to this particular hotel, I will be filing a complaint with the New Jersey Attorney General. I would encourage you, if you're staying at a hotel that charges these dishonest, outrageous, and deceptive resort fees, do the same thing. Sounds like uh, the dice are going to be rolling his way this weekend. I'm let's sure all the casino owners are watching right now. All right, let's load up those decks. Mar Marano's in the house. Uh, you're, well, you're asking for trouble. You're going to gamble at their place, and you're already telling them you're going to go to the attorney general's office. Why don't you try to go in a little under the radar? Well, for because your here's what happens. It's already going to be a madhouse. That's right. Here's what happens, though, honestly, is let's say you're a hotel that doesn't want to charge resort fees. You want more honest pricing. So your hotel tobacco, I'm Hotel Morano, you're charging $20 a room, but with a $30 resort fee. Are we playing Mr. Monopoly or Miss Monopoly? <laughs> which one? Because I'm trying to either, figure out what, either which what way. Uh, you got to tell me what you're identifying <laughs> as today, and then I can determine what the rental and resort fees no, will be. No, but so if you're a hotel, and you're charging the resort fee and I'm not, and I'm actually giving cheaper prices and more honest prices, I'm penalized because let's say someone's looking at to stay at Hotel Tobacco or Hotel Morano. Why would I stay at the $40 hotel when I could stay at the $20 here's Tobacco what I, Here's hotel. what I want. You, you don't get me started. I got, we got a lot of things. Got yes. a, a this is collusion. Today. This is you real collusion. You want me to start ranting? I'll start ranting. How about this? Show me a site that says... 
This hotel is going to cost you $500, period, zero, zero. Uh, and that's everything. The hotel fees, the resort fees, the taxes, the this, the that, and then whatever uh, Trivago, the weirdo guy, or, or Travelocity, or whatever they tack on on top of it. Just give me a site that says, here's one price, fits all, and there's no other charges. Charles, you handle all that. We're making the same point. I right? know. Now I'm joining in right. with you. But, but, so uh, what the saying, but what the hotel is The Wi-Fi doing, is the biggest hoax. They should give you the room for free. The, John, because once they get your Wi-Fi, they infect your phone, mm. and they track you around for the next year, and then they sell all that data to everybody else who wants to track you. So they should pay you for that. So there's a, re a great website uh, that I recently discovered on this subject. It's called killresortfees.com. And if you want to educate yourself about these insidious dishonest fees which they make it look on your hotel bill like it's a tax because they put it on taxes and fees they make it look like something the government is mandating that's not the case this is a cash grab by the hotel owners themselves kill resort fees we dig down and uh i probably like many of you was quite relieved yesterday when he ripped up the resort fees story like this that was two so days ago. I thought uh, that was behind us, but I see some things linger with this young man. That's right. And uh, when it's on his mind, he's probably on to something. So you might want to check out those resort fees. Um, you may want to bother your local officials and ask them, too, because that gets annoying. So then they got to do something about it. But, ban the resort fee. All right. I'm, Forget about I'm, banning uh, vaping. I'm pro resort. Me and, too. Um, any resorts I stay at, I'm not trying to ban anything. I would like good service. Frank wants flies inserted in his uh, Beyond Burger. That's right. Or whatever you may eat. But uh, Frankie, what else is going on today? Well, there's a ton of interesting things. And, you know, the president is once again going after the Federal Reserve, saying yesterday that they should um, make interest rates zero or even lower. And Ridiculous. There you see the president's tweet yesterday. Ridiculous. I agree with you, and I know you're going to get into it in the uh, terrific Mix It Up panel that we have with uh, Rob Taub and Tom Basile. Um, to me, this is very short-sighted. I mean, if you look at what the president said during the campaign, we've played the clips on this show. He made the case better than anybody that what was happening in the economy and the stock market was a bubble propped up by the Federal Reserve. I don't think trying to bl blow the bubble up higher and inflating it higher and hoping it doesn't deflate until after he wins re-election, I don't think it's a sound strategy. But the shame of it is, <clears throat> I don't necessarily blame, blame the president, I blame the American people. Too often the American people want to be treated like children, yeah. even if they say they don't. I'm, I'm with you. Uh, you know, I understand where he's coming from on one perspective because, again, um, in the banking world, and this may get, you know, out in the weeds for some people, uh, but we're at, again, the U.S. banks are at an unfair disadvantage because the European banks and the European central banks and all those bankers and all those countries like Germany that rely on in import-export notes from all their neighbors and everything, uh, they're, charging, they're charging negative interest. They're not paying You're people. Right. And they're charging them just to leave their money in the bank. Right. It's like I always use the uh, the analogy to Brewster's Millions, the Richard Pryor version, yeah. where he goes to the bank. And if people don't know the premise of the film, basically he's got 30 days to spend $30 million. And this was 30 years ago when $30 million was really $30 million. And he has to spend all this money in 30 days. So he goes to the bank and the bank says to him, of course, we'll give you a special interest rate. And Richard Pryor's character, uh, Montgomery Brewster, says, are you kidding me? I should be paying you for the privilege of using your vault. Now, it was funny back then. Now it's sad because it's become real. Um, when also, life imitates art. That's right. Uh, and it goes all the way back to one of the greatest of greats, uh, Richard Pryor. Oh, that's it was, great. It was amazing. Yeah, uh, his son, Richard Pryor Jr., a regular viewer of the show, very good friend of uh, the Fuzz on the Lens crew. Now, Excellent. what's also real is uh, the following Facebook message that I got from Kelly Jordan, who said the following, you look so good with a nice high and tight haircut. Thank you for that, Kelly. And I'll remind you uh, that I can be reached on Facebook at facebook.com slash Moreno fan. And among any of the women in our audience, I am remaining single for another 15 days. So hope you'll make the most of it. And if anybody wants to take them up on that offer, you can DM me uh, <laughs> because I'll be handling the guest list along with a panel of esteemed greats in Frankie's life for the uh, for the big celebration this week. There'll be uh, I can't even imagine when you have an event, you bring out 
people from corners of the world and under rocks that I, I you shock me every time. Yeah, now the only thing... I can't tell you how many people want to come, and it's a, it's a very close-knit group. That's right, group. that's right. The wedding list itself, my fiancé is vetoing people like crazy. You wouldn't believe, I keep trying to sneak give people me, in. Give me, give me somebody that, that you had to fight hard for. Give that me, I got give, in yeah, there? Yeah, that you got um, in there, that your I, wife wanted to veto it, like, no... That's I, an executive see. order. I, um, you could say it. Come no, on. I think, uh, well, I don't want to, uh, Roger Stone is one invitee that, uh, that I had to fight hard for because he's under indictment and uh, that whole thing. So, the Manhattan so the, Madam, Kristen Davis. The as misses well. didn't want any well, publicly uh, indicted felons. Well, at, at, well I'm sure he's not there'll a felon. be a host he's, more. He's not a felon not yet. Well no, exactly. He's not a felon. Oh, so Richard Luthman, when I thought he might get out of prison, and unfortunately he's got to serve another 20 months, I said, if Richard gets out of prison, we've got to invite him to the wedding. This guy he's talking about, um, Richard Luthman, uh, has represented Frank and I have passed. But you may know him because you're on the cover of the New York Post because... Um, as demonstrated in his pleading, he was going through some mental issues, but um, he challenged the opposing attorney to a fight to the death. Um, and he was like the Game of Thrones lawyer, and I think he annoyed some people. But, uh, Frank, I can't wait to see who shows up on Sunday for your bachelor party. I'm going to dig in with you while we're there into who's behind the resort fees. Thank you. And maybe we can we're get do a whole expose. Of it, make an investigative piece. Can we do liquid lunch from Atlantic City on Monday? Monday? Yeah. Wow. I think we could. All but, right. Uh, there's a host of people standing right there behind the cameras right now, shaking their heads and thinking of all the reasons why we cannot do it. Uh, but. He's the managing editor. He makes all the creative decisions. It is, it is a great cr crew. And uh, you know what? Tom Basile and Rob Taub are going to be up right after this. We're going to do what we do every day, bring on a Democrat, a Republican. I throw out the topics. They duke it out. At the end, we shake hands and we part friends. Same. Stay right there. We'll be back right after this.